analysis of cantilever beam with help of ComSol Multiphysics. So let's start. When you open ComSol, we'll get an interface like this. From here, you have to select Model Wizard. Now we have to select Geometry, which will be 3D. Then we'll select the domain of our study, which is Structural Mechanics, and under it, Solid Mechanics, and click on Add. Now I'll move on to study and within study we'll select stationary here and click on done. So our canvas has loaded and I'll first change the unit here. I'll change it to millimeters and we'll build a small cantilever beam here. Uh, for that you have to go to geometry and click on block so I'll take the depth to be 10 and the width to be 20 millimeters and the beam length of 500 millimeters and then we'll click build selected see our beam is built and I'll click on zoom extends here we'll zoom it so this is our cantilever beam model geometry is complete now we will move on to materials from materials we'll right click and add material from here I'll select structural steel and add to component and I'll cut it here so here you can see the material has been added also the properties are given here see poisons ratio and young's modulus these are the two main properties that we need and then we'll move on to the domain of our study which is solid mechanics under which if we go to free then we can see that all the faces of this beam are set to free that means there is there is no constraint so what we need to do we have to add constraints and in a cantilever beam we know that one end is fixed so let make this uh, part fixed so for that i'll right click on solid mechanics and click on fixed constraint and apply fixed constraint to this face see this one is added stationary that means it will have no displacement so our model has been given constraint now another thing that we have to add is load so in load let me go right click on solid mechanics again we'll click on boundary load I have taken boundary load to uh, I mean show you how it works with uh, uniformly distributed load so as we know in uh, uniformly distributed load we generally find it in like uh, Newton palm millimeter so I'll select from here total force and you have to give the total uh, force magnitude here so if I take a uniformly distributed load of 1 newton per millimeter then for 500 millimeters it would be 500 newton so let me put 500 here and in which phase we will be putting this load we'll be putting this load in this phase so our axis downward is y axis which is in positive direction so we have added positive 500 newton so our uh, model has been constrained successfully now we'll go on to mesh so in here you can select the size of the mesh and since it is physics control we don't have to give any parameter for the dimension of the geometry so we'll click on build all and see our mesh has been created and then we will move on to study for executing this and we'll click on compute so the study has been started
so it's complete so now i'll do one thing i'll remove this so you can see it here our results have been generated and this plots the stress or one misses stress what we see as bending stress as well so i'll go to the stress column here and then i'll click on this color legend and show maximum and minimum values so here you'll get that maximum stress is somewhat like this magnitude and as seen in cantilever beam the moment is always maximum at the fixed end so your bending stress will also be maximum at the fixed end and this uh, implies for all kind of load it can be udl it can be a point load it can be a uniformly varying load the um, uh, magnitude of the bending stress will always be maximum at the fixed point since our bending moment will always be maximum at the fixed point so one uh, in uh, bending analysis of beams we need to find two things one is our maximum stress for finding out the material and one is deflection so we have found out stress here we have to find deflection so one thing i want to tell here first see this you can see this uh, rectangle or a cuboid shape of the beam in black color this indicates the beam if there has been no load applied on it but since we have applied a load we'll find that it has got a deflection so our next aim is to find this deflection so i'll click on surface here and see this surface plot actually now gives us the solid dot misses that means one misses trace for this solid and it is given in newton per meter square or, t or we what we call as pascal so i want to get deflection for that i'll go here and see it's giving replace expression i'll go on to replace expression and then from there i'll select our domain which is solid mechanics and then we want displacement or deflection so we'll select displacement and we'll select displacement once more here and then we'll select the y component since we have applied load in y component as well so i'll click here and press enter see the expression has been changed it has been given in unit has been changed to millimeters and expression is v which denotes here the deflection in the y direction so i'll click plot and see what comes up is the displacement uh, sorry deflection of the beam yeah so our moment of inertia was 10 cross 20 to the power 4 by 12 which comes around 6666.67 so i'll divide it with that so we'll get a value of 5.85 so I want you to do this calculation in your calculator as well and you will find this value only. So now let us go on to console. So here we can see we'll, we have got a value of 5.84. So we can see there has been some error in the theoretical formula that we read which gave us 5.85 and the analysis by finite element process that we have here so what is the uh, reason for this discrepancy is that in uh, for uh, using the theoretical formula we assume many things that uh, there are many assumptions related to bending so that is the main reason we get an error in the error in the results so this you have to take care while uh, doing things with finite element analysis methods and this also helps you to understand where the our fallacy is in the theoretical systems in here we will find that there are many assumptions there are many assumptions for bending theory there are many assumptions for regarding the material as well that it will follow Hooke's law completely and like that so for those reasons there has been an error in the final result 
so this around 6666.67 so I'll divide it with that so we'll get a value of 5.85 so I want you to do this calculation in your calculator as well and you will find this value only so now let us go on to console so here we can see we'll we have got a value of 5.84 so we can see there has been some error in the theoretical formula that we read which gave us 5.85 and the analysis by finite element process that we have here so what is the uh, reason for this discrepancy is that in uh, for uh, using the theoretical formula we assume many things that uh, there are many assumptions related to bending so that is the main reason we get an error in the, the results so this you have to take care while uh, doing things with finite element analysis methods and this also helps you to understand where the our fallacy is in the theoretical systems in here we will find that there are many assumptions there are many assumptions for bending theory there are many assumptions for regarding the material as well that it will follow Hooke's law completely and like that so for those reasons there has been an error in the final result so this and the error is very less let's calculate what the error percentage is it's 0 0.0 1 divided by 5.85 into 100 so our error percentage is 0 0.17 which is negligible so we can use this value as well uh, since this value doesn't care about any kind of assumption so this completes our analysis for cantilever beams in the next video we'll do analysis of fixed beams thank you